I'm Stephen Pimpo. And this is Mary Newsline. Now, WUSA 9 Game on Sports, brought to you by Xfinity. It may be Valentine's Day, but there was no love lost between 20th ranked Virginia Commonwealth and George Washington. Welcome to the Xfinity Center in College Park. And it's not Thursday, but here in Maryland, it's all about the throwback, giving kids a place to play soccer and showcase their skills. Do you believe in magic? These fans sure do. So what are you guys going to be for Halloween? I mean, I'm thinking of going as the ghost of Randy Edsel's career. <laughs> VCU pulling away late. Jaquan Lewis with a tough lay-in. And then watch the Rams' defense on the other end. Wait for it. Boom! We didn't see any white smoke coming from Xfinity Center this morning, but Maryland football has their man. And that man's name is Durkin. There's a difference between watching a game here in the stands and here in the press box. It's I mean, definitely me, right? What, what's the competition? Man? The Instagram competition. Who has an Instagram and who doesn't? I guess I, I lose. Gotta get, gotta get with the times. I guess I lose. Gotta get with the times. Omar Infante. Going, going, gone. Royals win 7-2, even the series with the game three set for Friday. Basketball season is just around the corner. And find out why Maryland fans are so excited about adding a few more of these to their trophy case. Been a tough stretch for GW. They've lost three of their last four and looking to right the ship today. Since 1999, the youth of the world have been coming out here to the Junior Tennis Champion Center to learn, train, and study. And bust their, you know, <laughs> from dusk till dawn. J.R. Smith looking to get rid of it and John Wall says you shall not pass. He throws it down and the Zards are up 8-0. Potential playoff spot and a chance to beat your hated rival in prime time? Kirk Cousins couldn't be reached for comment. We're pretty sure he'd like that. Well, Dave, big time players make big time plays in the Big Ten. And that's exactly what the Maryland Terrapins have been doing on the court this season. Welcome to Terrapin Timeout, your place for all the best insider stories on Maryland sports. And this DJ doesn't drop the base, he drops the boom. James goes coast to coast and finishes in the paint to put it within one. Hail to the king, baby. Next on Maryland Newsline, find out why Cubs fans are feeling blue. In a good way. You never know who could be behind this mask. And that's part of the fun. Testudo could be anywhere. This team has taught all America's children that playing like a girl means, and we're quoting the president here, you're a badass. That's actually really scary. And I like owls. I know, right? People are going to have to take a page out of the owl's book and uh, keep their head on a swivel. <laughs> All right, that's Maryland Newsline for tonight. You can find out more about the stories presented here by going to our website, cnsmaryland.org. I'm Stephen Pimpo. Thanks for joining us. Now, WUSA 9 Game on Sports, brought to you by Xfinity. It may be Valentine's Day, but there was no love lost between 20th ranked Virginia Commonwealth and George Washington. A few weeks ago, the Rams routed the Colonials by 24. Been a tough stretch for GW. They've lost three of their last four and looking to right the ship today. We go to GW getting ready to roll in front of the Colonial Army. Speaking of rolling, here comes VCU's Jordan Burgess like a runaway freight train and he stuffs it over every George Washington defender in the building. Tight game in the first half. Here's some good Colonial defense. Kevin Larson with the steal, and he finishes with a jam on the other end. Tie game at the half. VCU pulling away late. Jaquan Lewis with a tough lay-in. And then watch the Rams' defense on the other end. Wait for it. Boom! Jordan Burgess with the block. GW falls 79-66. to And here's Frank Hanrahan with more from the Smith Center. Well, it's hard to believe that for George Washington, a team that lost for the first time at home, they're very much on the NCAA bubble after a tough loss to VCU. I think Coach Lonergan's done a phenomenal job with this program. Uh, they only have one senior. Those guys are, are continuing to get better. Uh, so I think the future is really bright here, and, and you know they, they're having a good year. We had pretty bad losses this last couple games, uh, but we got together, we talked. Uh, we were feeling good, we were positive about the game, and we thought we were going to give it all out. 
uh, during the game, but the outcome is not what we wanted. To me, it's all about defense. We lost a, a game on uh, defensive end of the court. I mean, we drove in there, we'd score, and we go back on, and they're wide open for three again. We didn't have guys on the bench that really could play at this level. Yes, Coach Mike Lonergan pulling no punches, also hinting he may make some changes in the starting lineup ahead of another big A-10 game Wednesday night back here in Foggy Bottom against Davidson. At Smith Center, Frank Handrahan, WSA 9 Sports. Thanks, Frank. Well, guys, that'll do it for today's sports report. With WUSA 9, I'm Stephen Pimpo. Welcome to the Xfinity Center in College Park. And it's not Thursday, but here in Maryland, it's all about the throwback as the Terrapins, ranked 19th in the country, take on the Indiana Hoosiers, as you can see right behind me. It's a rematch of the 2002 National Championship game, which the Terrapins won famously. And in honor of that game, the team has asked fans to wear their retro gear tonight to support the team of old. But last time I checked, it's not 2002, and these Terps have to bust out of a slump in a big way. Last time they played Indiana, the Hoosiers beat them badly, 89-70, to start off Maryland's terrible road, Big Ten road losing streak including their last game against Iowa. Indiana is going to throw some trickeration at the Terps tonight. Just today, adding tight end Jordan Fuchs to the lineup to give them an extra physical defensive challenge. We'll see what Mello Trimble and Dez Wells can do against a physical presence like that on the court. And we'll see if the Terps can recapture some of the 2002 magic here in College Park. Back to you guys. This scene is typical for a day in the life of a 21st century sports reporter. Coach, the passing game the last couple of weeks, where do you see things still not clicking? Quite a change from 1924. That's when the legendary Shirley Povich first put type to paper for the Washington Post. For the next 75 years, he would stand watch over some of the most defining moments in all of sports. And wrote about the great athletes uh, of the century from Babe Ruth to Cal Ripken. He could just take the magic word and just make them dance off the newspaper. But it's a different world today. There are myriad ways, obviously, in which, in the way that things have changed, the relationship of the media to athletes, the relationship of fans to athletes, uh, the, what we read, how we read it. And what does your average sports reporter have to know? You guys on TV that are writing columns. I mean, guys that cover games, you have to do a blog. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you got Twitter, you got Facebook, I mean, you got all these things. All these new tools mean anyone can be a sports writer. But Povich believed you had to earn your stripes. Those like him still say there's a difference between watching a game here in the stands and here in the press box. When I was at the Post and uh, reporters were sent to cover events, they were sent there as journalists, not fans. Now even that is changing. SB Nation, one of the top 10 largest sports websites in the world, says they cover sports using, quote, professional brains with the heart of a fan. Alex Kirshner, a Maryland student who writes for Testudo Times, SB Nation's Maryland blog, says this only adds to the writing. You can provide information to people and say, you know what, we're Maryland people. Um, you know, this is our school, this is our community. And, and that kind of, in a way, makes us an authority. And it's not going away. Anything that's out there that promotes sports writing, sports talking, sports journalism, it's good. And the better stuff is going to be consumed and the worse stuff is going to fall by the wayside. So, what might Shirley Povich think of the state of sports reporting today? He was a firm believer that you, you, your number one job was the written word. It's important to remember to always be aware of um, what you're writing and aware of who could be reading it. Looks like the more things change, the more they stay the same, even after almost 100 years. I'm Stephen Pimpo, reporting from College Park. These kids love soccer, but they're even more excited about something else. The U.S. national team is coming. Coaches for the team took the field with the kids as part of their community outreach program, She Believes. The She Believes movement has been all over the country, giving kids a place to play soccer and showcase their skills. <laughs> but it's more than just showing the best way to kick a ball. 
The She Believes campaign, it's all about belief. Belief in one another and most importantly about self-belief and the power that self-belief has. They can be anything that they want. They, re they really can. I, I think that's the biggest thing. Whether they want to be soccer player or an FBI detective. The team especially wants to be an example for young girls. We got your back. We're trying to do as much as we can to pave the way for all those little girls growing up. It's the type of responsibility that comes with winning a World Cup. I hope one day you guys can make goals, work hard, and achieve those goals to feel what we did. It's a goal the team hopes will score with these kids. In Washington, Stephen Pimpo, CNS TV. Maryland fans packed the Xfinity Center on Saturday for the latest edition of Maryland Madness, the school's opening celebration for the men's and women's basketball teams. Are you ready to have fun? Yeah. Terps of all ages showed up in full force to see their favorite players. Diamond Stone and a Mellow Tremble. And get a few autographs. Got a ball signed. I got a shoe. And this year's fans are extra excited. I expect both of these teams to be in the final four. I already have my plane tickets for Houston. It's also special for the players. Um, I think it was really great to have so much fan support. Uh, they're really loyal, and I think we have the greatest fans in the country. This year's theme was magic, complete with an appearance from Maryland great Walt the Wizard Williams, an actual magician, and a magically themed dance number by both teams. Do you believe in magic? Sure and with Maryland basketball ranked in the top three by multiple sources, magic might just make believers out of many fans. And while this is business as usual for the Maryland women, the men's team now has to live up to some lofty expectations. When I took the job on May 10th, a long time ago, this is what I envisioned for Maryland basketball. For the team, the pressure to do well is a big incentive. When they throw rinkers at us, it just makes us work harder. I think our, our motivation this year is more just behind kind of proving to people that, that we are as good as, as they say we are. And confidence like that is why Terps fans think the hype is no illusion. In College Park, Stephen Pimpo, CNS TV. My name is Jan Wojnowski. I'm 72. And I'm on a mission. If you drive past the Vatican's U.S. Embassy, you'll see him. He stands alone, driven by his obsession, the sexual abuse of children by Catholic priests. My life was ruined by a Catholic pedophile priest. For the last 17 years, the Polish immigrant and retired steelworker has done the same thing every day. At 3.21 p.m., he takes a bus from his home in Bladensburg to the metro and rides to D.C. It's a terrible crime. Many will never tell. Many commit suicide. It takes another bus to get to the embassy, known as the Apostolic Nunciature. And that is where Pope Francis will spend his two nights in Washington. Child molestation has long been a stain on the Catholic Church but Pope Francis has been applauded for creating what is called the Pontifical Commission for the Protection of Minors. Wojnowski says words are easy. It's much smarter than the previous one. Absolutely, you know. <laughs> the, the shoulders about the, the, But still, he's a company man. And while he does not know what security will be like when the Pope arrives, Wojnowski is determined to hold his ground. I, I'm standing here regardless. Through the years, Wojnowski says passersby have called him a loser, told him to get over it, get a life, made obscene gestures. He even had a priest spit in his face. I've been standing here for 17 years. Standing? Yes, sir. Hey, have you heard about Catholic priests sexually abusing children? Are you Catholic? You bet I am. I'm proud to be one. No matter the weather, Wojnowski stays until dark. It's strange to me, but my life would have no meaning if I wouldn't do it. Then he packs up and heads home, knowing he'll be right back out again the next day. No reason for me to stop. Why I would stop? Would you stop?